Hello everybody and welcome to my power ranking, I mean draft analysis video, that's right, volume here, bringing you something new, something old, five years old, whatever, we're doing it again, let's get right into it, I don't have a lot of time and I want to zoom right into it, so if you might recall from, you might recall my draft from the draft uh, PRs, because I released this after this, but here we go, it's Reggie Alecki first, I thought this is the best Terra user at the time, now it is, um, nerfed because the transistor does 1.3 instead of 1.5 so i feel like i was a little bit scammed but i think reggie lucky thrives in having the terra ice the bolt beam stab usually it's the best thing but you can run other things options like palafin i might run terra water we'll see um and so that's for sort of what i went with my next one that i didn't really think that hard about uh i just kind of wanted to use it it was a good spinner it's great tusk and he's here or it's here to roll some people. It's a bit expensive. I'm not a terror user. I don't know what I'm doing. But it's 18 points. Kind of expensive. But it does a lot. It's flexible. It spins. It hits hard with ground types. It has headlong rush and close combat. It's really uh, offensive. You can look at the stats here. I believe those are showing. Um, yeah, they are. And so, yeah, this is a speed run here so after this uh, I was in Europe when I was drafting this team so that's why it's a little scuffed at the beginning but I figured these are powerful mons and I left Roaring Moon as my third pick and honestly I didn't even I said like wait don't pick that for me and then I was like wait a second pick it for me anyway it's so good these are such a good top three um, and it gives me another offensive win con these guys are both protosynthesis users which means I was thinking like I might have to get Sun on this team but before that I need a fucking steel type because there's not that many great ones and uh, fairy and ice as you can see again roll my team here because that's both Roaring Moon and Great Tech Star. We're weak to them, so I need something to cover for them, which is going to be Scissor, is what I picked. And I thought, uh, this is not 18 points, it's 17 points. How could I forget? Um, and Scissor is a uh, great pivot. doesn't have Roost anymore, so it's a lot less defensive than it was, but Bolt Punch, Sword Sword Stand, it's always a threat you have to be considerate of. And I wanted to um, make sure I got that on my team, and I wanted to use it, haven't used it in a while, so that's why it's here. So... The, it gives me some U-turn momentum as well, some, uh, which is nice to go with my uh, like uh, Roaring Moon and Alecky. But um, after this, you know, I talked about Sun. It's Scizor on the Sun, but Torkoal's on the team. And Torkoal makes it because, you know, I have to have it with the great test Roaring Moon. Protosynthesis boost is great. And um, I'm really actually planning also to get Screamtail at this point in the draft, uh, which you might remember that Rom took from me. So you're like, what am I going to do? But... That is not the most important thing at the moment, because uh, this thing is 11 points on my team. And uh, it gives me another spinner, uh, it gives me a rock setter, and it's uh, not to take the pressure off a great tusk from doing that. And even though Scizor might live a fire fang, might not live a fire fang in the sun, it wasn't living like a flamethrower from anything ever. So, like, who cares if it's in the sun or not? Uh, but it does make a thing to be a note of, like, fire type attacks will be stronger on my team generally if I'm running Torkoal, which I might do a lot, because it's such a good combination with the rest of my team. However, uh, I lost Screamtail, I didn't know what to do, I had two paths, like a water path, like a balance type path, it's like an Azumarill, I had a path with Dondozo, a path that was more stall based, defensive, a path with um, uh, Walking Wake, which I often did not go for here. Um, I have, I went for, uh, but I, again, considering both of those paths, I was going for Decidueye, which is another uh, nice, it's a pivot, it's a grass type, it gives me a ground resist, which I desperately don't have. I kind of need that for a lucky team with Torkoal and everything. None of these mods really want to take a ground hit anyway. So it's just a nice pivot mod, gives me a strong grass type, gives me the ghost typing as well. Um, and after this, Screamtail's gone, I'm like, alright, I'm pivoting to Walking Wake, but I don't really want to do that, so I want to go for the Azu route. But guess what? You know who took Screamtail? Rom. You know who took Azu real? Rom. I'm going to beat Rom's ass later in this season. Like, I don't remember what week I faced him, but they're going down. The, 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 they're the fairy thief, and I will, I will fun, hunt them down. So, that's what I went for. I went for the Decidueye, and that kind of was uh, more of a balance pick, so I could wait to decide whether I wanted Walking Wake or um, uh, Azumarill. But then, Azumarill got taken, so I was like, do I really want to go for Walking Wake? But the Double Dragon with Roaring Moon was kind of weird, so I went with something different, and so much so that I saved it for the end of the draft. That's right, my water type is last, because first we got to pick a fairy type, because my fairy type got stolen, and I fig figured that was more important than uh, Azu or whatever, because there's only two fairy types that I really wanted left, being Hatterene or Gardevoir, but I went with Hatterene because my good friend Bash over, who was in Pool B at the time, in Attack, we don't play him, maybe we'll see him in the playoffs, I hope to, uh, Hatterene came through, 
and Hatterin gets me a trick room, uh, but I guess Magic Bounce to keep off Hazardous Rhetorical and Mystical Fires boosted in the sun, so it's a nice little mini synergies that I have in my team, and I kind of like it. And I haven't used this one yet, so I'm excited to see what it's like. I figure if I don't really have a big trick room team, it's probably going to be mid, but it is a mid-tier Pokemon anyway, so I don't know how good it's going to be, but we'll see what it can do for me uh, in these upcoming nine weeks. Uh, and then... Uh, I don't go for modern type here. I go for something else. It's kind of cheap in my opinion for what it was. Eight points actually. I really wanted to use Star After. It's a bird. It has so much coverage. Or not coverage. It's so much power. Flying type weaknesses are prevalent throughout most of these teams, as you might have noticed from the uh, PRs. And I, I part of that's always good to have a strong flying death. I really wanted to use it. It could punch probably give me a nice wall breaker to support like another wall breaker to go along the tusk. Because like Regieleki and Roaring Moon usually are cleaners. Scizor. If it's not defensive, it's cleaning. It's, I mean, it can break a little bit, but it's slow, right? So, uh, Star After gives me a fast breaker, 100 speed. Kind of like, it fits in this nice 87 to 119 gap that I have on my team. Um, and so, I honestly, the team's coming out pretty nicely, but I need a water to round it out. I only have six points. Uh, but I end up going with the goat, Quillfish. It gives me a poison type, another fairy resist, and an ice resist. It's kind of du dual field. Uh, gives me more defensive option to the, to the Scizor. And six points. Gives me spikes, T spikes. Uh, and some proper of options with Intimidate, double Intimidate core in the back. And honestly, I really like this team. I think it's going to do great. Uh, I think it's going to kind of fits what I want to do. Uh, I have, like, good pivots with uh, options, but I can also do aggressive doublings and get myself in positions here. I, it's a really hit hard pass. It's not really a lot of a defensive core. Defensive core is kind of the fire water grass. Like, I mean, Decidueye is uh, vaguely offensive mod with its stats, but like its typing makes it somewhat defensive as a Pokemon. So uh, Torkoal and Quillfish are going to be the backbone, and with a Hatterene backing him up in Decidueye, and then we'll kind of pivot into the Great Tusk as well. But Great Tusk is one to make a special hit. A lot of things to go and consider with this team. Um, I have to thank Smot for helping me draft this team. He's going to be, you'll hear his name a lot because he helps me prep it the most out of everyone. In fact, he. Uh, he helped me prep the ball for all my week one. So, uh, looking forward to that match. And uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season with this team. I think it'll do great. It got, like, eighth in power rankings from Pluto. But I don't really... I think Pluto in my rankings are sort of, like, irrelevant in power rankings. We just ranked each other. So, it's one-person opinion versus two. So, I don't know where I would put myself if I ranked myself. But probably somewhere in the middle. It may not be the on-paper strongest team, but I think it fits me. And that's what counts. A lucky to the moon. We have moon. And that's all we need. So uh, I'm going to be uploading videos this whole summer while for this league. Uh, this is my draft analysis. Arizona Dactyls, the volume here. Crash Gang, Crash Gang, Crash Gang. Apps are out, actually, so or coming out, uh, depending on when this releases. So um, please join Crash Gang. And we're looking for people in my WPF app here. The WPF is so big. They don't need people. Come to us. Come to Crash. We're small. We need you. Uh, anyway, that's it. Volume here, signing out, and I hope you enjoyed. I feel like it's a little bland, but draft analysis, what else can you really say? I don't want to reveal my techniques also, because people might watch this. So, well, I, for the last time, Volume, signing out.